welcome. Great to have you with us, Jenny. It is our time once again. Faith matters. Yes, and that certainly is the truth. Faith does matter. And the Word of God says very clearly that faith is exactly what we need to possess the promises that God has for us. In the Spirit, things always happen by faith. And once we have them in the Spirit, we will definitely see them manifest in the natural. So faith does matter. And we want you to have hearts that are so full of the Word of God that the force of faith becomes a great reality inside of you to live in the fullness of life that He has for you. You know, we're going to be with you for the next uh, 30 odd minutes and uh, it's just going to be a great time. I, I've just been so overwhelmed. This is an interactive program and people are writing in. They are sending us their questions. You've got to do that by email. All right. FM at myfaithtv.com. FM at myfaithtv.com. Get us those questions. And uh, remember as well, if you want to be on our daily devotion and our email list, then all you've got to do is send a one line and say, I would love love to receive your daily devotion, faith building. Let me tell you the great thing about our daily devotion is every morning it comes into your email box, whether it's at work or at home, you can open it, you can hit play and it will play you the voice read daily devotion or you can read the daily devotion if you don't want it playing in your office, all right, or your home. So great way to get it each and every day when we subscribe you to our daily devotion. So please get the, get those emails off to us, fm at MyFaithTV.com. Now, the past few weeks we've been dealing with questions and today is going to be no different. Next week we're going to start teaching a little bit more along a particular journey that God has stirred on our hearts, but uh, we're going to deal this last week with uh, some of the questions pertaining to financial issues, Jen. And uh, many people have written to us. We've answered a lot of questions from all angles for the past few weeks, but today, yes, we're going to deal with money. Today we're going to deal with with the financial question that everybody is always asking. And uh, we're going to do it in a way that I really believe is going to be challenging and uh, really help you and speak to you. So don't tune off. Stay with us. It's going to be great. And we're going to be right back to answer some of the questions that have come in pertaining to financial things in just a moment. Well, there you have it. We are ready. Are you ready to go, Jen? Always ready. All right, let's go. And then Jano writes to us, all right, says, I've watched the program and I, 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 I'm interested to know about giving. But here's the question, says, where exactly do I need to give if I want to prosper? Is it only to church or even to the needy? And who are the needy? Is my poor relatives are they also included? Now, Jen, this is a great question. This is one question that I believe so many people need to clearly understand. Now, remember, on this program, we want to teach the Word of God through the questions. That's what we're doing over these programs because this question is very important. And uh, we've spoken pertaining to financial matters on one of our previous programs. But as we deal with uh, financial questions uh, today, I, I want to read more of them because I, I want us, we're going to talk a lot around different elements of it. But Trish also wrote to us and Trish had another similar question. And uh, she said, what happens to all the seed that one sows under compulsion. Mm -hmm. All right, so just bear that question in mind and then let's go to the third one. Keo writes, uh, kindly assist me on how one can pay the 10% to God. If I don't belong to a specific church, but I watch different faith channels and I visit different churches, can I distribute the money according to all the ministries or do I need to give one ministry per the 10%? All right, so a lot of different questions and we're going to 
over these next few minutes, we're going to answer all of them simultaneously, and we'll deal with each of you as we go. And remember, if you've got financial questions, get them to us as well. Uh, I want, and I've always wanted, Jen, for this program to be the heart of God, mm -hmm. that this is never about compulsion. This is never about manipulation. This is about the realities. And even as we deal with this whole element of the financial realm today in the questions, Yes, it's always a tough one to deal with, but we want God's heart to come across because there is a truth, there is a reality, and there is the honesty from the Word of God that is the fact pertaining to these areas. Absolutely. And as we said, this is really not about a man's opinion. This is about the opinion of God. This, the principles that we're teaching are His opinion. That's His will. It's His way of doing things. And if you remember in the book of Matthew 6.33, it says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God, which is His way of being and doing right, and then all these things will be added to you. And the rest of that scripture is all about material things. It's not not just about the things that we need to live, but it's about everything pertaining yeah. to material things that we need. So it really is a great principle to understand when we take God's word and we understand his principles concerning financial prosperity and we apply them to our lives, there will be a repercussion of his goodness and his abundance and his provision in our lives. Right. Um, so it is really, really important that we understand that it's his principles that cause us to walk in the fullness of life. That's right. Well, Jen, we've got another question just coming. I mean, I thought this might be a good one to start with, but uh, Sunny writes to us and says, I spend money that I don't have, all right, and I can't get to all of my debt. Sunny, that is naughty, <laughs> all right. But I think that's pretty much what but, a lot of people but let's say. Let's be honest, let's be honest, that is that's something <laughs> that, that, that every single person says, I'm so stressed and, and uh, goes on to say a lot of other things, but come on, let's just talk about the spending money I don't have. What do I do? You know, Romans 13, 8 says, Owe no man anything except to love, love one, one another, another, for he who loves one another has fulfilled the law. Sonny and so many of you, I, I want to share this with you. Debt is an all-consuming trap of the enemy. When you are subject to the circumstances of debt, you are a slave to mammon. In other words, every day you go off to work. I'll never forget, what is it, uh, the seven dwarves or whatever, or the, when they used to sing the song, hi ho, hi ho, it's off to work I go, tra la 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 la, tra la 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 la, hi ho, hi ho. Now listen, that's what it seems like every <laughs> single day. When you are in a debt trap, do you know what? You are trapped going to work, to work, because you are a slave to debt. I want to speak to you for a moment. Have you ever tried not spending money on something that you don't need? Have you ever tried not uh, buying something that you shouldn't have if you can't afford to pay for it? Now, I know there's investment opportunities. I know there's ways to invest in property. And, and there are business decisions that people need to make. And you measure the cost of those business decisions. And normally the asset helps you pay for it. And we there's do a many. Plan. There's, there's a, a plan, plan. And there's an investment plan. And we have many of those in operation, Jen, in our personal capacity. But here's the key. The key is flexing this little piece of plastic. Let me, let me hold it up, this, this little piece of plastic, all right? When you flex, and, and here's the problem, many of us have more than one of them, all right? Jen, I've got two of them, all right? But many of us have more than one of them. But when you flex this piece of plastic and you can't afford to pay the bill on this piece of plastic. And there's no working plan. And there's no it. working plan, that is debt. Now here's the joy. We use the benefit of a credit card as a debit card. Mm -hmm. uh, I have, and, and when we chose, when we were in debt, remember how deep we were in debt? We were, we were over our ears in debt. We, we couldn't make ends meet, and we got on our knees before God, and we said, God, forgive us. We, we, we've, we've messed up here, and we got out of debt in every area of all of our uh, credit Creditors. cards and, and everything, and we've, we've paid everything off. We made a decision that our credit cards would become debit cards. We made a decision in our lives that every single week 
Whatever we spend on them, we would settle them. We would owe no man anything. We would never pay another cent of interest on a credit card. We would never do it. And that was the decision that we made. And I want you to understand this. I want you to realize this. When you make a decision to only spend money on what you can afford, and when you deal with the, the root causes, Jen, the, the things of the I once, you know, the children of, of Israel were in the wilderness experience. And God, go and read your Bible, this is profound. God caused their clothes to grow on them. Do you know the children of Israel's clothes and shoes never wore out? Well, there were no stores for them to go buy. There were no, but, but here's the key. The key is this, when you trust God in the area of your finances, I believe you can trust Him for your clothes to last. I believe you can trust Him for your car to last. I believe you can trust Him for your washing machine, every appliance in your home. You don't have to have the best. You don't have to have everything new. You can decide for the next two years while you're getting out of debt, you can decide, Lord, I'm going to trust you to keep what I've got going, going. while I offset my debt. And that's so, awesome. so Sonny, I want to challenge you and uh, everyone else that's, that's in a debt situation. Bring it before God. Say, God, I want to get out of debt. I'm going to, I'm going to uh, announce this debt as sin. I'm going to lay it down at the altar. And Lord, I want you to come through in my finances. Help me pay this off and watch what I'm going to do. All right, and watch what God will do in your life. Now let's move on to the next question because Ninjo, I believe, or <laughs> Nino, however you say it, says, where do I need to give? I want to prosper. Jen, let's talk about that. Where would you say they need to give? Well, the word says very clearly in Malachi 3, it's, it makes it very clear that uh, we have a tithe and we have an offering. And I think that is something that is really important for people to understand. God says that your tithe belongs to Him and your tithe is 10%. 10%. And the That's place right. that we bring the tithe, He says in Malachi, is to your storehouse. That would be the place where you are spiritually Fed. In other words, your local church where you are a partner. Now, remember, it's really important to understand that when we, uh, well, the word says very clearly, we shouldn't neglect the fellowship of the saints. In other words, it's really important that we do have a spiritual home. That's right. Uh, and, and when we make a place our spiritual home, it's that place that we partner with and it's that place that we give our tithe or we pay our tithe to the Lord too. That's right. Now, let, let, let's just bring this into perspective again. All right. Your local church that you belong to is your spiritual storehouse, according to the Word of God. It's very important that you understand that that is your storehouse. But if you are in a rural location, maybe you're a missionary, maybe you're out there on the, on the field somewhere where television is your storehouse. This very channel is your storehouse. And if that's what you're choosing to grow with in the Word of God, then you need to say, well, for this time, while I don't have a local church, this is my storehouse. But don't make the television set your storehouse when you should be going to a local church. Absolutely. Understand this. Absolutely. Maybe you're an elderly person in an elderly home and you can't get. Maybe you're in a hospital bed. Maybe you're in a prison cell. That's fine. Then this is your storehouse. Then you say, Lord, I want to sow to this network. Then you sow. That becomes your storehouse. And the Word of God says 10% of everything, not just something, of everything, Any of income. your income that comes in, you need to take and sow it into your storehouse. And when you do that, I want to tell you, God, the Bible says in Malachi 3, it says He opens the window of heaven, of heaven and He places for you around you a hedge of protection that the enemy can't come near you. Your tithe is the most important asset. It's the most important thing. When we came to realize this, Jen, we decided we would not pay anything else until we had paid the time. Because it's our covenant connection That's in the it. area of our finances with God. We are in covenant connection with Jesus Christ. And in the new covenant, we must understand that this is a principle that stands just as strong as it did before the law That's right. of Moses. It's the same principle that God established with Abraham way back with Melchizedek. That's right. And yeah. it's the same principle that stands today in Any, your covenant anyone, connection. Anyone, Jenny, who says that tithing is an Old 
Testament law. law. You do not know your word. Sir, ma'am, come and sit and talk to me. All right. Let's I will take you on a journey in the word of God. I will prove to you. Go and study the word. That way before the law was the principle of tithing. And Jesus reaffirms it in the New Testament when He speaks and He, and he tells people to carry on doing what they know to do. Absolutely. All right, Because it is the principle, it is a covenant principle, this element of tithing. And the church has been robbed from it. And many men and women of God have been robbed because of this very teaching, because your pastors are too scared to teach it from the pulpit because they think you're going to leave the church. I, I, want to, I want to speak it for them right now. All right, I want you to understand this is God's covenant with you. It's not a law. It's not a law. It's a principle of love. That's it's a it. principle of gratitude that we decide in our hearts, God, you have given us everything. His word says that everything that we have, everything good is from him. The salary that you receive every month, the gifts of financial or provision that yeah. you get, the food that is in your cupboards, in your kitchen, everything you have is from him. So why not would we not want to take the best that we have? Just 10% is all he's asking yeah. and return it back to him to show him God as we bring this tithe to you, it's our way of saying we, we trust you. you. And we trust you. We it's trust right. your provision. We know that when we give you this 10% as a love gift to you, it's not just a gift, it's yours. As we give it to you, God, we trust that you will be able to take the 90% that is remaining and make it go further than what the full 100% would in the first place. Jen, that, that is so strong and so powerful and so true. You know what? That's all this relationship is about. It's love. Think about it. Trust. You've trusted God with your eternal salvation. Mm -hmm. In other words, you are at a place where you've said, Lord, when I die, I know I'm going to heaven. All right? You have trusted Him by faith. Giving is the same thing. You have to put trust and faith in your giving. And when you apply it, and that's where, where the question is asked, I believe here by uh, Trish, where she says, when I sow under compulsion. No, you never sow under do compulsion. Not do that. You always sow, Trish, by faith. It's the only way you give. You never give under compulsion because compulsion is when the, the, when someone is manipulating you with a billboard or saying or begging or saying, please give, I need this. Or, or, or when a network comes before you and says, if you don't give, we've got to shut down. Well, listen, if you don't give and they've got to shut down, they need to shut down because they, 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 they're not worth teaching the message of faith. The same as the church. Well, we need your money for this. No, no, never give under compulsion. Always give with a cheerful heart. Always give because God has stirred your heart. Always give by faith. Now, Jen, a quick story, and I know our time is running out, but so I, 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 want, I want to bring this home here quickly. I'll never forget, I was praying for someone in a healing line once. They came forward needing a touch from God in the era of finances. And they said to me, Pastor, I've got a problem. I can't afford to tithe. Mm -hmm. I, I can't, I can't tithe. I said, well, well, what's the problem? They said, when I tithe, I, I don't believe I will have enough money at the end of the month to be able to pay all my bills. So I said to them, I said, I'll tell you what. I said, what if I make you a promise? Now listen to this. What if I make you a promise? You tithe and whatever you are short to pay your bills at the end of the month, I will pay. All right. In other words, you've tithed to God to the ministry, I will give you back whatever you short that equals your tithe if you are short to be able to pay your bills. They looked at me and said, Pastor, really? You promise me? You'll do that? I said, yeah, I'll do that. They said, I'm going to tithe. Are you kidding me? They'll rather believe you than the Word of God. That's what I was getting to. <laughs> I mean, can you believe it? I mean, the person would rather trust me, a man. a man, to give the money back than to trust God in to accordance provide. with His Word to provide the 10% they're giving. Mm -hmm. How foolish can you be and still breathe? Like faith, yeah. That shows the state of the body of Christ, mm -hmm. that they would rather trust in man than trust God. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, friends, partners, 
that's a faith problem. Mm -hmm. That's what this is. That's why this program is called Faith Matters. Because your faith should be at a point where you say, and, and the Bible tells us this is the one area in finances where we can prove Absolutely. God. Test me. He says, test me now by this, mm -hmm. that I will not open the windows of heaven that I will not pour out a blessing in Malachi, room enough for you to receive Hallelujah. it. Don't tell me now I'm quoting Old Testament scripture. I can't take my Bible and tear the whole Old Testament out because then I've got to tear creation out. <laughs> then you and I, how did we get you? Think about it. You can't, you can't take some of the Old Testament out that doesn't suit you. You've got to take the Bible. The, the Word says that you read the Bible cover to cover. You take nothing away and you add nothing to it. Absolutely. And you anyway, take it as it is. The New Testament tells us exactly what part of the Old Testament doesn't apply to us when we are in the New Covenant. And Jesus has made it very clear that tithing is a principle that was established before the law. And it's a principle that causes us to walk in the abundant blessing of our covenant of financial prosperity with Jesus, well, with God. And uh, it is just a way of freedom. Yeah. It's, you know, that's what the word says. It's when we know the truth, the truth sets us free. And we are meant to live free in the area of financial prosperity. That's right. To live in a place where we have a covenant that is established with God. We have an open heaven over our finances because we have decided with heart full of love and gratitude to say God this is yours That's right. thank you and we trust you wow wow you know all I can do we've got a few minutes left is encourage you Jenny and I made a decision years and years ago in our life to be tithers to be givers to be cheerful givers and it's changed our lives. It's changed our destiny. We have seen the blessings of God in every area. We have seen His blessing come on our lives in finances. We've seen it in miracles. We've seen it in signs and wonders. We've seen it in increase. The very fact you're watching this program right now is because of our seed we've sown. Mm -hmm. Jen, we give from the ministry. We give from the TV network. We give from ourselves personally. We have learned that the only way to step into the fullness of what God has is to be a giver. And I want to pray with you today. I want to trust God that you would really allow Him to stir your heart, that you would move into being a giver like you've never, ever been before, that you would just trust Him. Baby steps, small things, even if it's $100, even if it's $50, even if it's $10, it makes no, the amount is not the thing. It's God. I'm going to believe you for increase. Over and above God, the tithe. Over and above my tithe. Mm. Because that's the problem. Many of us are sowing seed all the time, but our tithe is not opening that window of God's blessing over our life. Get your house in order. Get your tithe in order. As a man, I'm speaking to you. As the head of your home, as a mother, uh, maybe you're a single mom. As the head of your home, get your act together in this area of your tithe. Write your tithe out first. Sow it by faith and watch as you bring it to God how He would bless you how He would increase you that when you give an offering over and above that the windows of heaven the blessing of God just comes upon your life and Father I speak right now supernatural increase supernatural you, blessing Father I pray that every heart listening would be stirred to be a faithful tither would be stirred to be a giver Lord that, that they would get their house in order Lord I pray for everyone that has recognized this area of my life is not what it should be. And Father, I pray that even right now, repentance Jesus comes name. in the hearts of men and women across this network. Jesus and Lord, name. today they say, Father, forgive us for we have robbed from you. Forgive us. We have taken away what's rightfully yours. And Lord, we have not experienced your blessing. Father, we put it under the blood today. Just pray that right now. Say, Lord, I put it under the blood of Jesus, Jesus today. You, and Lord, I ask that you remove my sin as far as the east is from the west. And Lord, that you give me an opportunity and a chance to be a faithful giver. Lord, I, today I'm turning my lifestyle around. Today I'm getting out of poverty. Today I'm stepping into prosperity. Today I'm walking in a new walk with you in Jesus' name. Today my finances turn around. And listen to me. Open your eyes right now. Look at me. Today I speak to you and I say, let your life change and receive the blessing of God today in Jesus' name. Watch what's going to happen. Today, you'll never be the same. 
Today, everything changes over your life in this area of financial prosperity. Jan, it's been great. <laughs> it's been short, but we could have gone on, but our time is up. I want to I want to ask you write to us if this program blessed you write to us just tell us hey you blessed me this was something I needed to hear send us one line say thank you for the program all right fm at myfaithtv.com just send us a one liner you want to receive our daily devotions send us a one liner remember this program we only tell you the truth this program we tell you every fact from the word of god jen that's what it's all about that's what this network believes that's what this network stands for it is the faith of God. Amen. Are and faith matters. Faith matters. <laughs> All right. So from the Faith Matters studio, thanks for being with us. We love you. We appreciate you. Get us those emails and we'll see you next time. Shalom. God bless you.